So let's see how the themes that we mentioned in the introduction play out in the case of class field theory over Q. In the context of class field theory over Q, Debenetti's threefold goal of class field theory becomes to describe all abelian extensions L of Q together with the Hagawa groups as well as how rational primes decompose in OL. Recall that we mentioned that the goal is to give this description in terms of the arithmetic of Q. And what's the arithmetic of Q? Well, in the introduction, we said that that should be the ideal class group of Q, but mm, we kind of lie a little bit. Z is a PID, so the ideal class group is going to be trivial in this case. Therefore, let us think of the arithmetic of Q instead as the group of fractional ideals on Q. Recall that this is just the multiplicative free abelian group generated by rational primes. In other words, it's a unit group of Q. Okay, so how do we express everything in terms of the arithmetic of Q? How do we relate abelian extensions of Q, Galois groups of those extensions, decomposition of primes in those extensions, reciprocity laws, density of primes, and so on and so on, in terms of the fractional ideals of Q? Where should we even begin? Which topic should we start with? Actually, there's an easy answer for that. Remember from the introduction that we already know all the abelian extensions of Q. Do you remember that we said that Kronecker and Weber proved that every abelian extension of Q is contained inside some cyclotomic extension? This is really, really nice because we know the Galois group of all such extensions. Observe that every element of this Galois group is completely determined by where it sends this primitive mth root of unity. Moreover, it can only send this primitive mth root of unity to another primitive mth root of unity. In other words, it must send this zeta m to some power a of zeta m, where a is relatively prime to this m. This gives an isomorphism between this Galois group and this cyclic group. This actually gives us an idea of how to relate the fractional ideals to element of the Galois group. Recall that as we've mentioned, we can think of the fractional ideals of Q as just the units in Q. Well, for those that are also unit in Z mod MZ, we can just view them as this corresponding map in the Galois group. Thus, we have a well-defined map on the following subgroup of the group of fractional ideals. If we look at the subgroup of the group of fractional ideal, generated by primes that are relatively prime to M, then we can view the prime elements of this group as an element of the Galois group in the following way. And then we can extend this definition multiplicatively to this whole subgroup. Its kernel is going to consist of fractions that are congruent to 1 mod m, i.e. ratio of integer a over b such that a is congruent to b modulo m. And the color group of this cyclotomic extension over q is just going to be isomorphic to this subgroup quotient now by this kernel, which in this case is just isomorphic to z mod mz star. So if we call this quotient CM, then CM is like a generalization of both Z mod MZ star and the ideal class group. In fact, C1 is exactly the ideal class group of Q. So this is how we could relate the color group of a cyclotomic extension of Q with the fractional ideals of Q. Now, what about a general abelian extension L over Q? Well, as we have mentioned, by Chronicle Weber, we know that any such finite abelian extension of Q must lie inside some cyclotomic extension of Q. Thus, the Galois group of L over Q is just going to be a quotient of the Galois group of this cyclotomic extension. Thus, we can compose the previous map with this quotient map to get a map to the Galois group of L over Q. If we call the kernel of this H, then we have a description of the Galois group of L over Q in terms of the fractional ideal. We have the Galois group of L over Q is isomorphic to the quotient of Z mod MZ star by this subgroup, which correspond to the subgroup of the Galois group that fixes this extension, L. Okay, I know that it seems like we were just playing verbal judo here and there was no new information. But actually, this new viewpoint is quite useful, and you'll see that when we discuss the composition of primes in the next episode.